Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus E320. And in today's episode we will be talking about single engine taxi out. This has actually been a requested video by one or two of you, so thanks for the request. You'd probably be surprised how complex that procedure is and how many things you actually have to bear in mind. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started, a quick overview of what we're doing today. So we are parked here in Sydney and we're getting ready for our flight back to Auckland in New Zealand. Active runway today is 3-4 left, which is all the way down there. So that means we're going to be pushing back and then taxiing all the way down to the end of this runway. In a scenario like this, it makes sense to start one engine and then start the other one a little bit later. So this is what we will be doing and I'm going to be explaining to you step by step how this procedure works and all the things you have to think about. So as the aircraft is coming to life here, let's uh, talk about a few things. So first of all, why would you do a single engine taxi out? Well, the obvious reason is that you are going to use less fuel. So according to Airbus, it uh, is about a fuel saving of four kilograms per minute. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think that uh, you save, let's say, you do this for 10 minutes or 5 minutes even on each flight. You have a fleet of 100 aircraft. They do 8 sectors every day. You know, you're very quickly into a huge sum of tons per year. So 4 kilos per minute is what we save and this is uh, what we're aiming for. Now in principle, it's actually fairly easy. You start engine number 1. You do the after start flow but there are some amendments to the normal flow we we'll look at that later then you taxi then you start engine number two again there's an additional flow we need to do then you do the flight control check and the taxi checklist and then you carry on to your takeoff runway so that's the principle we'll be looking at all the details uh, a bit later things to consider so the first and most important thing is the engine warm-up time you may be aware that from the moment you start the engine to the point to where you can actually apply takeoff thrust a certain amount needs to pass for the engine to properly warm up on the cfm engine that's two minutes on the leap engines on the neo that's three minutes but on the v25 engines uh, it can be up to five minutes so there's actually a difference it depends how long the engine uh, was stopped at the gate so sometimes even if you have quite a long taxi five minutes is quite a long time you're not going to be able to do a single engine taxi so you have to keep that in mind Two minutes is the general time we use because most of our aircraft have uh, CFM engines. So two minutes is okay, but even then, you know, you push back, you start one engine, you start taxi, and then fairly shortly after you already start the second one. But still, you were only with one engine for something like five minutes or so, and that has already saved 20 kilograms. Another thing to consider are metal items. Sometimes aircraft have certain known defects. You need to check if they prohibit you from doing a single engine taxi. All right, we are fully ready to go, ready for push and start. So I would say let's just get going. We'll start the push. And whilst we get push, we start engine number one. Engine start engine number one okay the pushback truck is on its way back to the terminal we have started engine number one and now we need to do a few things here so the first thing uh, we need to do is put this into norm so that's basically what we always do then this is different you go up here and you put the yellow elec pump on then you switch off the APU bleed, but you do not switch off the APU. We'll come to that in a moment. 
If you are in icing conditions, you would now switch on engine one anti-ice. It's a beautiful day, so that's not necessary. Uh, ground spoilers we need to arm. Then make sure the rudder trim is neutral. We set the flaps, so today is one plus F. Then we set the pitch trim, which is pretty much set. We are neutral. Uh, and then to get ready, we just switch on the taxi lights. So we do that here. And now we've done everything we need for a single engine taxi. Just very quickly, I am aware this aircraft has the V2500 engines and yes, it can be up to five minutes before we can take off. Let's pretend this aircraft has just arrived. The engines were still warm. That means we can uh, switch the second engine off just two minutes before we apply take off thrust. So we can definitely taxi all the way out there. And then once we're on this taxiway parallel to the runway, we start the second engine. Before we do that, a few things we need to discuss. So first of all, you should only ever start an engine when you are taxiing in a straight line and when you will be taxiing throughout the engine start in a straight line. This is important uh, for several reasons. First of all, you're going to get additional thrust on one side, which on certain days, like when the taxiway is slippery, makes it more difficult to control the aircraft. The second reason why we do not want to start an engine whilst we're in a turn has to do with the PTU. To start the engine, we're going to switch off the ELEC pump again, which means that the PTU is going to be running the whole hydraulic system on the aircraft, meaning that the nose wheel steering is dependent on the PTU with no backup. We don't like having no backups in aviation. So if the PTU fails and you're in a turn, all of a sudden you're going to lose nose wheel steering, which means you're going to end up in the grass or even worse in another aircraft or in a building. We do not want this. So we'd rather have the PTU fail on us when we're in a straight line because then we notice hopefully fairly quickly that the steering is no longer working and we can bring the aircraft to a safe stop. So these are the two reasons why you should only start engine number two when you taxi in a straight line. Two more things before we get started. Question number one, why do we let the APU running? Well, the reason being that in order to start engine number two, we're going to need the APU bleed. You may wonder, well, can't we do a cross bleed start? After all, engine number one is running. We could, but first of all, that would negate anything we want to do here in terms of fuel savings. And secondly, a cross bleed start is something that needs to be discussed with the airport. You usually have to go to certain areas. It's a complex procedure. You remember in the pneumatic video, we actually performed a cross bleed start and I took you through the procedure. So this is not something you just do, you know, if everything is working fine. So no, no cross bleed start. We're gonna use the APU as we always do and therefore leave the APU running. Second question, why do we need the ELEC pump on? Well, this is because engine number one is driving the green system, but engine number two is still offline. And so we need the ELEC pump to run the yellow system. Okay, and with all that discussed, we can finally start taxiing. Okay, so we are taxiing down parallel to the runway. If we would have a long queue of aircraft ahead of us, we may be thinking of delaying the other engine start. But let's just assume we're the only aircraft. I think starting somewhere here would make sense. Now, usually you would do this um, whilst taxiing, but I would like to explain a few things to you and point some things out in the cockpit. So I'm just gonna stop the aircraft now. back onto the yellow line otherwise my instructor is not going to be happy there we are on the yellow line we stop the aircraft 
Okay, parking brake set. Like I said, you would do this whilst taxing, but I would like to talk uh, you through what's gonna happen now. Okay, so once again, make sure you are taxing in a straight line and continue to taxi in a straight line throughout the procedure. First thing we need to do is switch off the yellow ELEC pump. Then we switch on the APU bleed, which is here. And then we need to wait 10 seconds after you switch on the APU bleed. This has to do with how the valves work. So you need to wait 10 seconds between switching on the APU bleed and before you start with the engine start procedure. Make sure that the engine thrust lever of engine number two is in idle. Sometimes colleagues just move them both out of habit. So make sure they're in idle before you start starting the engine. And then the rest is as always, we go to ignition start and we start engine number two. Okay, and now that both engines are running, we can essentially return to normal procedures. So the engine mode selector goes to norm, APU bleed comes off and we no longer require the APU, so that can come off as well. And now we are allowed to perform the flight control check. Now you may wonder why can't we do the flight control check with a single engine running? Well, according to Airbus, when you perform the flight control check, the internal systems check a lot of the actuators and systems that actually run the whole flight control system. And uh, some of the errors that could occur or some of the failures that the system could detect can only be detected when both engines are running. So in order to do this properly, you should only do a flight control check when both engines are running. So I guess you all know about the flight control check. It's fairly straightforward. If we switch that off, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. And that's it. Now we're back in the normal flow of things. You would now do your flows to get everything ready, you know, make sure the auto brake is on max, you do a config test, make sure the cabin is ready, then taxi to the runway, line up, line up checklist, and then you're ready to take off. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, like I said, single engine taxi out was a requested topic. So thanks again for the questions. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye. surprised how complex that procedure is and how many things you have to bear in mind so yeah without further ado let's get started Tisa no